Mark Scar on the Scar Card. Proud to welcome in Ricky Warwick to talk about the new record, When Life Was Hard and Fast. Ricky, welcome. Thank you, Mark. Good to be on the show. Thank you. Congratulations on the new album. Thank you very much. It's been about, what, five years since the solo record? Five years since the last solo record. I kind of have to uh, work them around the day job, which is Black Star Riders. You know, so that's really been the, the reason for the long sort of hiatus in the solo front. Right, and I want to talk about Black Star Riders in due time, but I want to focus on this for now. You did a majority of this with Keith Nelson from Buck Cherry. Tell me how you two got together. Yeah, I, mean, I did the whole record with Keith. Keith um, co-produced it and co-wrote quite a few of the songs on the record with me as well. Keith and I met up about three years ago. Um, Keith was suggested to me for the guitar position when Damon Johnson left Black Star Riders. He was recommended to me by a good friend of mine, Richard Fortas from Guns N' Roses. I knew who Keith was, you know, obviously Buck Cherry and everything, but never met the guy. So we arranged to meet, and, uh, you know, Keith walked into the meeting, and basically the first words out of his mouth were, I'm not the guy for Black Star Riders. And I was like, okay, well, what the heck are you doing here then? You know, uh, and he just said, look, I, massive respect for the band, massive respect for, for what you're doing. I wanted to come down and tell you face to face. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool of him. And, and we just started chatting. He said, look, I'm, I'm off the road. I don't really want to tour anymore. That's the reason why I don't think I'm the right guy for you. But I have a studio. I'm writing. Shall we get together and write a song? Would you like to come over one day? I said, yeah, absolutely. So we, a couple of days later, I'm in his studio. We're working on a song together. And that song was Fighting Heart, which is on the record. I took the demo of the song home with me and, and was like, man, that was a good day. You know, there's a vibe here. There's a chemistry between us. And I think we're onto something. So I called him up and I said, hey, Keith, I got more than enough ideas to start work on a new solo record. Would you be interested in being involved with them? Maybe co-producing it and help me finish the song. And he's like, I'm in. And that's really how the whole thing started. And I think that track, Ricky, was the first thing we heard out of the gate. It was. Yep, it was the first single, funnily enough, yeah. And also, You Don't Love Me. And then the title track just uh, was unleashed a week or two ago. So, yeah, those are the first three songs. And, um, you know, like I said, Keith had a hand in all of those. And, you know, it was a lot of fun making the record with him. He's just a great musician, a great artist, and a, and a really solid guy. And, it, you know, the, the chemistry is undeniable. And we had a lot of fun making the record, really did. Talking with Ricky Warwick about the new album, When Life Was Hard and Fast. And playing with you is your bandmate from Black Star Riders, Robbie Crane and uh-huh. Xavier Muriel. So it's kind of a Buck Cherry Black Star Riders it reunion. Is, right? Yep. No, there's a good hybrid going on there. Um, yeah, the band was so solid. I mean, Robbie's so great. And I always end up just him on stage. He's my favorite bass player in the world. And he is. And the Temptations there, I'm doing a solo record. I don't really, with all, all respect, want anybody from Black Star Riders involved in it because it's a solo record. But with Robbie, there's just, in my opinion, there's nobody better. And I love having him in the studio because he's just a great, great energy to have around. He's so positive. He's so funny. And a hell of a bass player. And then, you know, Keith suggested Xavier for the drums. And uh, Xavier lives in Austin, Texas. We flew him into L.A. And, and he came in and he nailed it. And that was the core band that put the, the backing tracks down. Really, really great musicians. Really blessed to have them on board. Talking to Ricky Warwick. And I wanted to talk about the guests, because you have a lot of friends on this. Somebody you go way back with is Joe Elliott, and he makes appearances. Yeah, it's kind of inconceivable now that, you know, I don't really do a solo record with really. Joe being involved in some way. Joe produced my first two solo records. And, it, you know, as a dear friend to me and a mentor and, and somebody whose opinion I really, really value. So I just love having Joe involved. I'm always asking him about what he thinks of the stuff I'm right because you can't argue with a guy that sold 150 million records. So, yeah, that was a no-brainer for me to have Joe on a track. And he, he always delivers the goods. And it, it, it's just a, a huge honor to have him on there. And from Duran Duran, Andy Taylor makes appearance. Again, Andy and I go way back. Andy produced an Almighty album way back in the early 90s. We've been friends ever since. And I've been over in Andy's place a few years ago working on some solo stuff that he's got coming out there this year. I was co-writing some solo stuff for him. I was working, I just started working on the songs for my solo album. I was like, you know, will you, will you play on a track? And he's like, send it over. And Andy's a great guitar player, and he rips a, rips a killer solo on the track. I'd rather be hit on the album. And... Luke Morley from Thunder and the Union. Yeah, again, you know, Luke from back in the days in the Almighty and the Almighty and Thunder were kind of started at the same time. We were coming up together in the UK. And Luke's just been a good buddy of mine for years. And, um, you know, I keep teasing him and going, you got to play on my record. He's like, send something over. So I finally I called his bluff and went, here you go, no excuses. <laughs> and he plays an incredible guitar solo on the track, You Don't Love Me. I mean, you really need to check that solo. It's just unbelievable what he plays. And then Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses. Yeah, Dizzy, again, you know, 
being in L.A. And, then, you know, I, I worked with Dizzy on his solo record. I, I co-wrote a song with Dizzy on his solo record. It came out a few years ago and played on that. So just asked him to return the favor, and he's on, I think he's on two or three tracks on the album playing some great keyboards. Talking with Ricky Warwick about when life was hard and fast, and how special is it to have your daughter on the record? The most special guest of all, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. You know, just a real proud dad moment to have her on there. The song was written for her. And I was just like, hey, kiddo, you know, will you come in and sing on this? Because she's a great little singer. She's really into music. And she's like, yeah, no problem. She came in and she she nailed it. And we had, we had a good day hanging out in the studio together. It was a lot of fun. And yeah, I'm really proud to have her on there. And her name is Pepper. And how old is she? Pepper is now 13. She hmm. was 11 years old when she sang on the track. And of course, now she's 13. She doesn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask, does she have, uh, have no, musical aspirations? Oh, God, no. Total, total embarrassment factor. Now. I don't, really? What are you saying about me? What are these people asking about me? <laughs> be really? Oh, God, I wish I'd never done it. But she has, and it's great, and I'm very proud of it. And she'll come around when she gets that teenage, teenage angst out of her system. Ricky, what's the lockdown been like for you? You know, it's, it's been okay. We're well, we're healthy. You know, my wife's able to work from home, so we're very thankful for that. And I've been able to, to, to continue writing and recording in my little studio in my house, and I've just got my head done and get on with that more than ever. I've been doing some online show, doing an online show every month, and just trying to remain positive and, and get through it best we can. And so we're very blessed in that department, because uh, obviously I know there's a lot of people that, that it's just been horrendous for, and, and so we count ourselves lucky. It's still monotonous. I'm still so bored of it, and just like everybody else wanted to be over and wanted to get back to some kind of normality, but it is what it is, and, and we've just been trying to be as positive as we can and get through it best we can, like everybody else, I guess. You mentioned online shows. you got one coming up. Online one coming up on March 13th, and that is a St. Patrick's Day special um, on stage, and that is open worldwide. I've been doing the stage at shows now for the last almost the last year, and basically going to be playing, playing songs. with All the songs are going to have an Irish connection. And uh, plenty, plenty of Guinness will be, will be drank through the show. So come and join me on that one. If, if the tickets are on, online, you can go get a ticket and come and join me. The St. Patrick's Lockdown. Right? Yeah. It's, it's usually St. Patrick's Lock-In in your local bar, but we, as we can't get to our local bars, we're going to have a lockdown in our homes. And uh, like I said, we'll, have, uh, we'll do some virtual, uh, virtual Irish drinking together. Certainly. Maybe, um, I don't know, maybe we'll see uh, Scott Gorham since he's born on St. Patrick's Day. It's perfect. Yeah, Scotty's birthday. Yeah, March seventeenth. You know, no better day to be born. Um, yeah, so he's he's over in London, unfortunately. So I'm missing Scotty. I haven't seen Scotty, in, obviously, in over a year. And you know, that's the longest I haven't seen him in in, in ten or eleven years. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm missing the old boy because he, he's just such a great guy and such a great guy to be around. And I love him dearly. Black Star Riders album number five. I hear it's written. It's written. Yeah, we're ready to go. You know, a few tweaks here and there. We're hoping we can get in over the summer to get that recorded. Hopefully more people will be vaccinated by then. Maybe some of the travel restrictions will have eased by then. And we can all get into the studio here in, in Los Angeles. And we're going to work with Jay Rustin again. He did the last album, Another State of Grace. So fingers crossed we can get in the summer and get the thing recorded. Cool. I can't wait. Thank you. I want to thank you, Ricky, for uh, being on with us. And Thank you, Mark. You're, gra- you're welcome. And congratulations with uh, When Life Was Hard and Fast. Looking forward to uh, seeing you at some juncture. Absolutely. And thank you so much. And uh, thank you to everybody out there. And, and please be safe and be well. We'll get back to rock and rolling again pretty soon. Ricky Warwick, When Life Was Hard and Fast. I'm Mark Scar on the Scar Card on 103.7 The Fox.